second and four. Going deep and open. Touchdown, Mark Duper. Duper has returned, and he is super. Good morning, everyone. It's Throwback Thursday, so we took a little shot back in the past when Marino was slinging the ball to Mark Cooper. I hope you guys are all feeling super. Welcome to our channel. We are on this Throwback Thursday. I'm Rob Mosley, a.k.a. Dolphin Thirsty. This is my co-host, Justin, a.k.a. Digging in the Trenches. I hope all you guys are doing great this morning. Ender's already in the house. Good morning, Ender. Ender. Morning, so, Ender. Yeah. Anyway, Justin, how's everything? I have to start with our pro. How's everything out in Colorado? <laughs> uh, it's it's a little bit nicer today. Um, it was a little cold this yesterday. Uh, after we were done, I went out and actually got some work in. <laughs> um, so it wasn't too damn bad. Uh, it was pretty nice out there. So everything went smooth. It's nice again this morning. Maybe we'll get some more work in today. <laughs> yeah. And um, not that it was big news or anything, you know, earth shattering, didn't, no one broke in headlines, but the Dolphins did, like you pointed out yesterday, they picked up um, Mike Glennon, and there's a good chance he's going to be active. Oh, Mike see, Glennon. Yeah, you can see his numbers aren't all that, and but, you know, that's who we signed yesterday. He's got more touchdowns than interceptions. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's good. And the funny thing is, he's only six and twenty-five. He won't be starting this week, of course, but he's only mm -hmm. six and twenty-five. And when I was looking it up, one of those wins was against the freaking Miami Dolphins. He has a six mm -hmm. and twenty-five record, and he had to beat the Miami Dolphins. That's just how the Dolphins have rolled the past few years. But anyway, so there's a good chance he's going to be active if Teddy can't go. So you know, we're, we may have he was coaching his son's basketball team. This oh wow! Up, and then they, they, he got a text from his agent saying that the Dolphins wanted to sign him, and he was. You know, he was like, oh, sure, I'll good. take a, I'll take a couple hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I know to wrap up a season. I know that's crazy. So uh, he, um, well, he, here he is. So he goes from coaching his son's uh, basketball team to, you know, quite possibly suiting up to play an NFL game this week. That's I mean, crazy. Big news, <laughs> but it shows so that, you know, they're taking it serious. You know, they're not just throwing some guy that at least has no experience. At least he has some if he has to get thrown in there. And how the Dolphins have rolled this year, every time we go with a backup quarterback, some, he ends up getting hurt during the game. So hopefully Teddy's finger's better. I would rather have Teddy in there, of course, than Mike Glennon, just because, you know, Teddy's been here all year in NFL action at least. So we'll see. You know, it's just not much news coming out. I mean, and a lot of people I know ran with that news of Mike McDaniel, you know, because I'm on Del of OutKick. It gets me used to saying I'm used to saying Miami Herald all these years, you know, right. Mario had come out with an article saying that if, but you and I could say that. That's why I, say, I don't think he, he didn't quote any source. He did say a source on him and if survives that Josh Boyer could be gone, but you know, he just came out and I think talking out of his own, but you know, saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all I mean, it's common sense. Yeah. If you have a collapse, I think everyone's rightfully, at least could be on the hot seat. Not meaning he's going to get fired, but he could at least his seat's going to be hot going into next year for sure. Right. Oh you know, man, but, I don't know, even I know. I don't up know what on Twitter does, and I'm like, geez, how in the heck did that blow up on Twitter? I had seen it and just blew it off, and then I see Twitter peeps going crazy <laughs> with it. And I was like, holy cow! Ah, maybe if you and I ever get the pull of Amando Salguero, you and I could say, you know, we can get <laughs> a place and uh, maybe we, I don't know, like. um I jumped in there for like a split second to see everybody kind of going back and forth. And I'm just like, whatever, man, whatever you guys want to do, whatever you guys think you guys. Hey, no, I got to learn how to market. And then uh, Bobby's a genius, man. Bobby knows how to get those people. Bobby Finn of um, Finn sports network, Finn's talk sports network. Talk about the tongue twister this morning. Finn's talk sports network, another great dolphins network, but he was like, he got everyone going with that. I'm like, man, that's great. I go, I guess I have to because I had looked at it and I'm like, ah, 
That's his Armando being Armando stirring up the pot. He doesn't have any sources anymore. I mean, he's saying that from Cincinnati because he's covering the democracy and how, you know, what sources are calling him up there. So right. I just blew it off and then boom. I, all I know is was the talk of Twitter yesterday. So it's I all mean, great. You know, all I fun. guess everybody could, you could, you could uh, decide to take it with a grain of salt or you can put some sort of a, uh, some stock into it. I don't know. Um, you and your guess is just as good as mine. Of course, um, I don't work for the Dolphins. Me. So, I mean, I'm I'll right. be honest with you. Like if everyone's on the hot seat, that's uh, not going to really surprise me, honestly. Like, um, do I want to keep destroying everything and rebuilding it every two, three years or every year? No, because the Dolphins are just the classic movers. I mean, they should just be a moving company, not a football team, because that's all they do is move. No, I know. They move from one guy to the next guy. But normally they give them, other than Cam Cameron, normally they give them more than one year's their MO. So I, I would think. But like like you and I said, I mean, before any Amondo treated it out or anything, we're saying if Ross has like a big name, like a Harbaugh or a Sean Payton in his back pocket saying, yeah, I will come to Miami if you make the move and get rid of the guy. That's the only reason I see because, he, you know, he's always had a big crush on big names like that. You know, so he would love to bring a big name into Miami like that. But outside of those two saying wink, wink, yeah, I will come. But you have to fire your guy first and go through the process and then hire me. Yes. And but outside of that, I just don't see reason to move on and especially this week i don't like it coming out because we still can get into the playoffs you know so i mean i think it's a little premature talking about this because if we beat the jets and now i don't know how because now on saturday with how the everything's fall kansas city could wrap up home field advantage because you know buffalo's not going to play this other game it doesn't look like so maybe buffalo's not even gonna who knows what out effort they're going to put in with you know of course figured in Football is Demar Hamlin, of course, their minds are on. So, you know, we don't know how Buffalo is going to play it now that they've been knocked off of the home field perch with how it stands right now. So. It's crazy, man. Like, <clears throat> I would hate to ever see something like what happened the other night, um, a freak accident out on the football field, end up costing a team like Buffalo some sort of momentum. But right. it's really hard not to see how it's not going to affect them some sort of way from here on out going forward. I mean, um, it could work for them, like some people say. It could be like, oh, we're going to go play for Demar. So, or it could sure. be their minds could be. So, it could go. It could work either way. And like I said, that's minor compared to the thing that happened. You know, of course, we're sure. all um, recovery, but we don't know how it's going to play out this week because on Saturday now in Kansas city plays and they say, if they win that game, they can lock up home field advantage because of the bills not having the, that extra game. So it's weird. I mean, you know, it's like crazy. I, I, like I, I, Eddie talking about little things like that, but it does affect our Miami dolphins. And that's what we're here to talk about. It's and crazy because so, um, the way that affected the bills players on the sideline and even the Bengals players on the sideline, it was nothing like what happened when my, when Tua got hurt versus the Bengals. It was a little bit different. Um, because this is actually CPR. This is, out yeah, this is and actually CPR, and they're giving, administering CPR right there on the field. That wasn't happening in our case. So right. we were worried about our brother, worried about what was happening with Tua, and the Dolphins got complacent during that game. Right. So if you could imagine the amount of complacency that was happening during our game, imagine what was happening during the Bills and Cincinnati game, like, they just weren't going to be able to play that game. Nope. And they all kind of knew it, seen it, seen on everyone's face. That's why, like, mm -hmm. it was unprecedented history that was happening right there. I've what did you think, like, that happened? And I agree with their stoppage of the game. But say the Bills are a strong candidate to be in the Super Bowl. What if this would have happened in the Super Bowl in the first quarter? Do they suspend the game? Or do they, what, what do you think they do if it's the Super Bowl? Do you think they suspend the game or they, someone asked me that and I had no answer. So I was just wondering what you think they, I would say, oh, that's, I have no clue what they would do. Like if that would have been the first quarter of the Super Bowl, it's just getting going and then a player needs CPR, they have to stop the Super Bowl. Do they continue the Super Bowl just due to the logistics? Yeah. Or do they yeah. You would have to continue the Super Bowl because of the logistics and, everybody coming there for that one event. Um, I don't think you could stop it for that. And unfortunately you would have to continue to play the football game because yep. you're not rescheduling a Super Bowl. Um, I, I, I don't think there's a way around that one. It would be heartbreaking for anybody who was involved family wise or player wise. Oh, so it'd be rough. Oh, no, it would be. I know. 
But anyway, so hopefully, like I say, that the Dolphins, that we can get what you've been saying all year, more balanced on offense, because the Jets defense will get to the quarterback and kill the quarterback if you don't establish some kind of running game and short, quick passing game. If you want Skyler Thompson to stand back there in the pocket and look down the field, you're going to have a long day. It's going to be, it's not going to be a pretty sight because they got the corners that can cover our receivers. They got people that can get to the quarterback. So you definitely, definitely, I know you've been pounding that table all year on this show saying that we have to run the football. And this is a prime example. We're going to have to at least show them run. You know, we don't even have to be super successful at it, but you got to show them run to keep them honest. It's it's really crazy, you know, like um, like you just said, I've been pounding the table, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball for it seems like the whole damn season now It's because I'm like a broken record over here. But I'll be honest with you. This is the game where you really, really, your back's against the wall. And you don't want to do what you've been doing all season long. This is the time to get out of your way. Get out of your own way, Mike McDaniels. Let the players on your football team actually go out there and win the game for you. Stop trying to overthink every damn opponent you face. Stop it. Um, Let your players play the game. Go out there and put it in their control. And put it in your offensive line's control and your running back's hands. Put the whole game on on, on them. Be like, listen, I need you to run. I need you to possess the rock, and I need you to score points when you get into the red zone. If you're going to throw, throw for high percentage and throw open. Whoever's open, I don't want you forcing the ball to Tyreek. I don't want you forcing the ball to Jalen. I want you putting the ball where it needs to go, right. where it's open. And that's and I what I want. in Skyler's head saying, use your legs if necessary. Just, you know, yes. obviously don't, get, don't go get yourself injured. But when you got that open lane, just run and then slide and, you know, of course, please. whatever, because we yep. don't want Mike Glennon coming into the game. Yeah, so, please use your legs. You're definitely going to have to scramble for some first downs here. I could see Skyler coming out of the game with like 40, 45, 30-some-odd yards. Yes, I, that's rushing. what I'm hoping um, because it's an element we haven't shown all year to teams. So, you know, use something to our advantage, you know, like make them worry about something else. Like, oh, we can't just turn our backs and cover because he might be running down the field on us, you know, behind our backs. Exactly. You know? so, um, the thing that I'd really like to see happen is, you already said it, just stay dedicated to running the football. You know, like if you come out there the first drive and you're like, run, 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 you get a couple first downs or whatever, and you have to punt. I'm not going to be upset about that. I want to get the ball back again. I want to run, run. You see an opening, maybe a pass in there. But I just want to control the rock and run it. Um, I feel that it's going to be the way for us to win this football game is to run the uh, run the football. I have like like I have the last five weeks. I know, but yeah, I know you particularly worry. You've been you know you've been saying all year that the Jets defense is borderline great. You know, borderline. It's legit. Really- it's legit. Like Jalen doesn't think it's as legit as I do, but um, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's pretty legit. Uh, John Franklin Myers versus Armstead, who's on half a leg, half an arm, half a toe. Um, I'll take John Franklin Myers. Rankins and uh, versus Eichenberg. Eichenberg's just getting back. Ran into his player last week on a. Oh uh, yeah, I saw that. Knocked, that blew knocked up on Twitter himself down. Last night. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. Knocked him. Knocked himself down. Um, <clears throat> Honestly, I don't even know who I would take in that matchup. I probably would take Rankins um, right there. Uh, then you go over to, to the middle, right? Quinn Williams versus Connor oh, I know. Williams. Yeah, I know take, you're taking, taking Quinn. Quinn. I'm taking Quinn Williams, man. He's he's an, a matchup indicator. Both of those, John Franklin Myers and Quinn Williams, are both matchup indicators along that line. If you do not locate them, they will make sure you have one hell of a long day. Just the same way as it did last time we played him. Skylar Thompson is very familiar with John Franklin Myers. He's the one who caused the the tip on the interception on the sideline over there to Craycraft, and that's the reason why that ball that ball was picked off. Right. Um, it doesn't get no better. You get over to the right side. Um, Carl Lawson versus Robert Hunt. I'll give Hunt the slight edge. Uh, it's one win. Then you got uh, kind of Quincy Williams versus Brandon Shell. When they decide to rush him off that side and that edge, man, dude, I don't. I'll give Shell the slight edge, and it's all. Oh wow, Quincy's I'm surprised you young, gave us the yeah. slight edge on that one. Yeah, That's- Quincy's a linebacker who's got some pass trust skills, but I think Shell can, you know, he can handle his own versus him. He's just got to be. He's 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 susceptible to a speed rush around the outside. So as long as susceptible, uh, as long as Shell keeps that in his mind, like, hey, I can get beat to the outside right here, and just gets his hands on the guy, he'll be fine. 
Uh, right. I'm more worried about John Flynn Myers than I am about Quincy Will- Williams. I know it's uh, Quinn Williams' brother. They play and feed off of each other. Oh, I know Quinn Williams is a beast for sure. But yeah, Man, I wish the Dolphins would have drafted someone like that. I mean, I'm looking for players like that. I'm looking for players that will just destroy offensive lines from the inside out. You want to win a lot of football games, you go get yourself a nose tackle one tech like that, and you'll, you'll do a whole lot with it. It might not show up on the stat sheet, which everybody right. likes because they're like all those statistics. But I'll be honest with you, it shows up on film. It shows up when he blows up a double-team duo block and uh, gets your hands yeah. on a quarterback and fall, causes him to fumble it or you know, rush the throw or something right. like that. Yep. Then you get to the outside of their their defense. It's just as good, or the, the deep back side of it. Um, Sauce Gardner versus Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill's I've been playing that all season long. Well, I'm not going to play Tyreek this year. This this time around, I'm taking Saw. I'm taking Sauce Gardner over Hill. Hopefully, Hill wow. will surprise. Hopefully, Hill will surprise me and show me that he's ready to play. Yeah, I'm taking Sauce this this matchup. Then you got Reed versus Waddle. Uh, that DJ Reed kid is a baller. Um, I think Waddle's going to hold his own, but I'm taking Reed. I got wow. You know, so you're taking our two best time. weapons that we had the match. They're going to take. They're going to take your. They're going to take your two best weapons away. No, they're going to take your two best weapons away. So I'm not sure why it's like anyone. No one should be surprised. No one should be surprised. I mean, maybe you are because I'm going with the other guy, but I've been going with our guys all year long. We've been get last month here and we've been getting beat. Yeah. So I'm going to go the other way around. See, see if that gives us some luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, I mean, even they're, I'm not going to lie, man, I'm giving them a lot of props, but I'm, I'm fond of that defense. Jordan Whitehead versus our tight ends. Are you kidding me? So Smythe Gusecki, the uh, Casper, the friendly ghost and Hunter long and Connor and Tanner yeah. Connor. Yeah, I'll take Whitehead right there. Uh, Whitehead comes up, and brings the wood almost every time he tackles somebody. He's really good in run support. You yeah. better be prepared for a long day with that kid. No, I, um, I agree. It's, they, I mean, look defense. at the matchups I just went over right there on defense, bro. That should scare the hell out of anybody. Like Jalen was talking, he gives the slight edge of uh, running backs of Mostert, Wilson, and Gold over Mosley and Alexander. I give it the other way around. I know Mosley's still – He's good, bro. He's good. He's a thumper in between the tackles. We'll bring it downhill. Alexander, sideline to sideline, blade to blade. We'll pick it off or we'll hawk you or knock you. <laughs> so yeah. you better be prepared, dude. This is going to be a rough game. Um, <clears throat> I could see why he would give them the slight edge, but that's if they're on their game. And, like, I ain't giving them the slight edge till the co- till the coach figures out how to use them correctly. If you got running backs like Moster, Wilson, and Ahmed, you just feed them, dude. Feed them. Make people right. come up into the box. Then you beat them over the top. Like, there's <clears> – <throat> that's football 101, bro. And he's going to, like, football Mike McDaniel. Here, I'm going to, like – like, he'll only scheme up, like, one or two good plays, like the one we saw last week where they had the um, – the stacked trips formation to the left and they had motion come off it and they were making it look like a run play to the left. But in reality, yeah. it was a sweet play going off to the right hand side. It was yeah, no, you like beautifully that play designed. Up. Yeah. So you want more of those fun trinkets thrown into our office. Yeah, I think you need them. I think he's got a bunch of them that he could be using and he's not using them. I would use them. This is the time to do it. This is the last game we're going to be able to play. If we're going to get into the playoffs, we're going to win this game. This is where you use everything you got right here. Um, and you empty the sweeps, tank, so to speak. So. Empty the whole thing, bro, and tell your players too. Like, hey, if you empty the tank, the eyes are on you. Do you have a contract coming up due next year? Well, we're watching you today. I know. I mean, that's right. what I would be saying. And let them know the whole league's watching because they all break down these films at the end to see who played in the all the way through the season hard. So it's crazy, man. Like I know everybody was loving the 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 mission we were on, and there was all positivity. But well, there's got to be some point in time where you like he did the other day where he's like, get it, get it freaking fixed. Where he said that on the sideline. That's the most I've seen that dude get animated or mad yeah, all was, season long. I think well, that was the Detroit game. I yeah, think get it, it was, yeah. get it fucking fixed. Okay, well, I'll be honest with you, dude. I need some more of that out of you. And the reason why I need more of that is because the players need to understand that the moment that they're in, and the, the veterans understand it, but these young players who've never been there before don't understand what a playoff game feels like and like the the adrenaline that's going through these players at that point in time. Morning, morning, Bobby. Finn's Talk Sports Network in the house. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I'm, I'm with you, though. You know, you do. This is an all-out because you can't control what happens in the Buffalo Patriots game. So you got to play like – you win, you're in. And if it doesn't work out, that's, that's just how football bounces and all those five losses in a row will come back to haunt us. 
but we still got a chance. So you got to play all in. Like all this is in, a bro. playoff. This is a playoff game this in their a playoff mind. Playoff game, it yeah. Should be. Like and, last you know, week, like think about it. if we handled our business last week. Seattle handled business versus the Jets. Don't no, worry about don't worry about what anybody else has to handle. Yeah, we wouldn't even have yeah. to worry about this week. We'd be resting people, get some people experience. It'd be a good game to get Skyler yep. experience instead of saying Skyler go win the football game. Exactly. Boring, you know, so now he'd be, you know, now we gotta put the young man in a position like go win, kid. You know, it's, it's all it's, on you. There no you go. Pressure, but you know, it's all on you. Yeah, you know? it's nuts, bro. But um, I felt that Skyler actually started catching a groove later to the end of that Patriots game. I agree. Um, and some people would say it was garbage time, but he's still making the throws. I mean, he's still making the throws. Through, he's still making that the touchdown reads. through. He did to Gasecki was it a really good throw. I mean, he was you know he you know I know you don't like your Gasecki. <laughs> I know that's not why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because me and my wife were watching the game at that that point in time, which is rare. My wife like rarely will sit down and watch any of it. And yeah. she's kind of started to get like into us coming back. And I'm like, oh, now you're watching, huh? But yeah. that particular play, she even called out Skyler because he's running to his right. And I'm like, just run it in. Just fucking run it in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, why the hell did he throw it right there? And I was like, he's young. I guess he thought he could get it in there and he completed it. But yeah. in my mind, I was with her. I was like, why the hell didn't he? Yeah, no, I agree. But when he did that. throw it, and I was at first, I'm, but it was a beautiful throw. I mean, running and oh, it's a great it. throw. But I mean, yeah. if you look at the replay, bro, he's like, there's nothing in front of him, and there's this green in front of him in the end zone, and there's nobody there to stop you. I um, mean, that's something he's gonna learn as he gets going down the the line later. That just go ahead and run that football in right there. Don't even throw it because the percentages of you missing that throw or Mike Gusecki bobbling it or dropping it are very much higher than the chances of you getting stopped with no one in front of you. <laughs> you just need to go ahead and run that one in right there. Yeah. And that's and I hope a this week, I hope he does, like we said earlier, that I hope he takes advantage because he has some legs and he can move the ball. And it's an element, you know, the Dolphins don't normally have. So I hope we use that to our advantage. In it's crazy league. because uh, – I think they do see that in the kid. Uh, it's nuts, man. I hope they see the same thing I saw him and why he was on my Dolphins big, big board draft board. The only quarterback I had on there last year was for this reason is because of how he improvises when the, the play breaks down. His um, The way he does things when the play gets ugly, he'll scramble around and try to make a play, whether it's with his legs or whether he keeps his eyes downfield and makes a right. big throw on third down or fourth down. He seems to – he seemed to so, come up with a big play time and time so again he's, for Kansas He's State. like a poor man, Russell Wilson, in Russell Wilson's early part of the career. He's more of an off-script quarterback than a quarterback that's just good in script and stuff. It's, and just, it's crazy because he reminded me of like a poor man's Taysom Hill, to be quite honest with you. He can't do all those things Taysom can do, like right. play running back, play fullback, right. play okay. tight yeah. end, play receiver, play quarterback. But he can, he can improvise kind of like a Taysom Hill will. He's very – um, he's crafty, you know, he's already 25. So he's seen a lot of football already. Um, I think that he's, you know, he's just, he was under a lot of pressure last week. It's easier, going to be easier for him this week. Like you've already mentioned Rob, because he's going to be preparing all week for this football game. So he's going to get all those first uh, team rep snaps. And this is hope, be a little different. this is hope he stays healthy because all year when our backup prepared all week, the backup's gone out. And then the other guy has to come in that said no reps. So it, it's just gone. It's been an ugly story for the Dolphins. Like our backups coming in don't. I mean, can, this week it continued. Teddy came in to be the backup. He got hurt, and Skyler had to come in against the Jets. The first game, Teddy. You know, I wouldn't count him getting hurt, but the NFL ruled him out, saying, "Oh, you stumbled. You're out of the game." And then Skyler had to come in after the first play of the game, basically. You know, so it was just all year we have not had any consistency at quarterback. The two are getting hurt, and then our backups getting hurt within the game that they had practiced for all week. And that next guy has to come in, so it's it's rough. It is, bro. I was just gonna say right there. I didn't want to interrupt you, uh, but um, I mean that's really hard to overcome when your starter goes out with an injury to start the football game. If we can avoid any major catastrophes in this game, like something like that happening, I think we win the game. But um, I will say, how would the Jets react if they came into the game like that and um, Mike White got hurt and they were right back to Wilson? I mean, I think they would be in the same boat that we're in, like struggling and clawing to try to fight back into the game. Right, no, I agree. Um, 
<clears throat> Let's see how they handle teams adversity. Keep on rolling. I know we always bring up the 49ers, but there's very few teams in NFL that can go from one quarterback to the next and continue their style of play. And that's because they got great defenses, a great running game. They got the whole combination that can help out here. We don't have that whole elite set of fellow teammates. So the quarterback has to have a bigger role and it hurts us when he hasn't had any preparation. And then all of a sudden you say, okay, go beat them. And you know, you had like two snaps all practice, you know, go beat them. You see, that's what's the, it's nuts, man. Like I'm not a saints fan, but I am kind of fond of their offense, the way that they run things because Taysom Hill's there. So they, they have a weapon that I think is unique for the NFL to where they can bring in a quarterback and give you a different look. And you're like, <clears throat> as a defense, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't know what's going to happen. It could be Taysom just being back there to be a decoy, or he could be the one actually throwing the football. Yeah, no, um, <clears throat> it brings a level of a dimension to the, your offense to where it like it's like you're sneaky, you're tricky. You're able to be like, oh, Taysom, go line up over there as a wide receiver and then come in motion. And then the defense is like, oh, watch out, seven's going to get the ball. Um, I think I wish we had a little bit more of that in our offense. If you see, and we have Tyree Kill, so it's like to me, I don't understand why you're not using the guys where you need to. Like, you want to get the ball into Tyreek's hands. I understand that, but there's numerous different ways to get this guy the football. Um, I know, like numerous said, different ways. Jet bro. sweeps all year. They said get him in there and get him the ball, and you know, jet they did just pass week against New England. That one touchdown he got was yep. more or less, you know, so they got him the ball that way, and he used his speed to get into the end zone. There's so, more ways than that. You could shovel pass it to him. You could. Uh, read option it to him you could old school college option the ball to tie no, i agree him. there's but, numerous but we're different paying him i don't care we can over we could some people say oh we can't overuse him yeah you can when you're paying him what you're paying him you got to use him i guess um, that's the difference between me and mike mcdaniels is i would throw him the football i would hand him the football i would shovel pass him the football I would option toss him the football. I would do all kinds of crazy things. People would be like, how the hell are we going to stop Tyreek? I would just yep. literally give him the ball and make everything feed off of Tyreek. Yep. But that also means I would be using him as a decoy. I'd also be moving him in motion to make defenses react to him. They do, but they yep. just don't do it enough. Well, someone in one of his press conference asked if he's ever thought of him and putting him back there as a punt returner. And he said, yeah, I've thought about it, but you got to, you would. know. You, you know, you just have so many things. He gets a lot of snaps. So, you know, we go with Cedric and whatever. So, but to me, yeah, this last game might not put him back there. At least one or two just to scare the hell out of a team having him back there building a punt, you know? I guess I just think about things a little differently than Coach does because I want to win. I want to win every game. Uh, and I'm going to bring the elements that I have on my team every single game. <clears throat> right. I've been thinking about it since the beginning of the year. The things you could do with what's on our team was is mind boggling. What's to say you don't put Jalen Waddle and Tyreek back there for a punt return and then have some sort of a form of a reverse on every right. other on every punt and then they have to defend that. Then yeah. you're giving that special teams one more thing to think about. Just see what I'm saying right here? Like, damn, yeah. bro, like he's a head least- football coach and he can't come up with these. Yeah. And I'm a dude yeah. on a on a chair over here in Colorado and I'm over here thinking of them. What the hell? Yeah. But you get paid. See what I'm saying? Like Mike McDaniel, I expect you to be coming up with these things, not me. Yeah. So hopefully they do some stuff. Like as you say, the coaches need to empty the take. The players need to empty the take. And I'm going to take that little break here. Welcome, everyone. You're you're on Dolphins Thirsty's Network. This is Dolphins Daily. And if you guys want to talk about some old-time stuff, this Thursday's the day that we talk about a lot. Oh, yeah. We talk about old-time stuff. So – Drop some names that you remember from the Dolphins past and stuff. See how many of those people you know in that picture. But um, right. I know every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. I'm sure most of the people there do. Those are all famous ones right there. But, I'll give um, you an old school, uh, old school name right here. He's one of my favorite um, players out of the past. Um, John Offerdahl, the oh. famous uh, Dolphins linebacker we had before we had uh, – uh, uh, Zach Thomas and yeah. had a g- good string of linebackers there. I loved me some John Offord all. Um, mm-hmm. That was my favorite linebacker growing up. Uh, I thought he was awesome. <laughs> well, he, he wished me well in a video. So he's yeah. one of the guys. I've that seen that. Well. Yeah, I showed you the video. It's nice, you know. Uh, save yeah, that's it for awesome, the for another day in the future. If you I know? ever had that video and that was for me, I'd be like, look at this, man. 
I know that's why I say that's why I don't show it publicly because it still gets to me because I was laying in a hospital bed at the time. Absolutely. I would show it on here one day, but I showed it to you. It was good. So was I thought it was time. actually really cool, man. Like uh you know, they're pulling for you and uh they know you're a big Dolphins fan. It was very heartwarming. Yeah, I know. It well, it's one day in the off season, <laughs> I'll probably break it out when we don't have as much to talk about. So <laughs> right. this week, you know, we wanna focus we wanna focus on the the Jets. And like I said, we can't worry about the other game, the Dolphins. We as fans can worry about the other game because we're not playing. But the Dolphins, all they have to do is they have to worry about beating the damn Jets. You always want to beat the stinking Jets anyway because you're to me, they're always going to be the biggest rivals in the division. I know other fans say, oh, New England because they win on the heavy. Oh, Buffalo. But to me, my least favorite team in the It's is the Jets. Team. I hate it's the, the Jets, Jets, bro. And I've yeah, always I'm been. And there's petty things maybe because like Dwight Stevens himself doesn't hold a grudge. But to me, they took Dwight Stevens now on a dirty hit. And then mm -hmm. him and when, um, what's their name, the Seattle's current coach, he did the choke choke hold, like when Pete Stionoff has missed an extra point, but we still won that game, Pete Carroll. And then like, all that, you know, so I, it's just like those Jets memories. Just remember, so I hate the Jets. Uh, the worst. one that gives me the biggest memory is when the uh, Jets coaching staff, one of the members, Nolan Carroll, intercepted the ball or special team, something, and he oh, tripped. Yeah. He tripped him on the sideline, and I was so pissed. That's from then on. I'm like, oh my god, I hate this team. They're such dirty bastards. Yeah, I know. That's so like, yeah, to me, for whatever like reason, the Jets are always my least favorite. I like, hate the Jets, bro. Like I, that's I, the I, team probably, I could survive mm -hmm. seeing the Buffalo Bills win a Super Bowl, but man, sure. seeing the Jets win the Super Bowl would be oh, a man. gut punch. That's, that's misery right there, bro. I, oh my god. We got so used to New England winning that it's like, oh, okay, New England won another one at this point. What's the difference? You right. know? So the only one um, I was happy that I sell. Celebrated on my New England loss when they were undefeated going into the Super Bowl and the Giants beat them. I felt like that was my favorite Super Bowl since the Dolphins lost the two, two Super Bowls I remember in my life right. when we lost to the Redskins and the 49ers. So the best Super Bowl I ever felt like we won was when the Giants beat the Patriots to knock them off the undefeated. <laughs> that was so great. And I'm so that happy was. Was, because that I would have hated to see a division rival match our undefeated record. Yeah, I thought it was. You can never beat that record. They could, the Dolphins are undefeated. Yes, they played last game. But when I hear people, oh, someone's going to beat that record Monday, and it's not. It's all you can do is match it because the Dolphins won all the games they had on their <laughs> schedule that year. But that's all that someone else could do in the future. So it can never be beat this match. But still, I don't want it to ever be match. I know right. that's the petty Dolphin fans in us, but that's fine. <laughs> Maybe one day the Dolphins can give us a Super Bowl, and I won't worry about the old records as much. Right. You know, right now, all I have is that old record. Give us something new to cheer about. Right, right, um, right now I want to share something with you guys that I made weeks ago when we were, uh, seems like forever ago when we were like eight and three and we were we were winning <clears throat> and I thought the you know the future might be a little bit brighter for the Dolphins. I made this little list I have here that's called tricks to playoff football, like things that you're gonna see different, like you know, because once you get into the playoffs, it's you know all all bets are off the table, no holds bars, everything starts to get different. Um, I think the Dolphins should have started pulling some of these out weeks ago, to be quite honest with you. Um, how is the best way to keep a defense off balance and to keep your offense in rhythm? Um, I know you already know the answer to this, but it's a no huddle offense. Why the hell aren't you seeing this? Yeah, I know we haven't done that at all, really. And no, you know. haven't. And it's, it's something that's really like it's mind boggling to me. You want to keep a defense off balance? Go run a no huddle offense. Keep the same, you know, get them in a, a mismatched defense where you have maybe a nickel look and then get out there and run the football on that or vice versa, get a run look. We're like the opposite of that. So we can almost every play clock on us goes down to the last second where we're like trying to get the play in. So it's I guess, like, yeah, that's actually a good point you just made right there. Like we're having trouble getting the play calls in. How are you going to get into a no huddle offense? Right. So. See, that sucks, bro. I don't like that. I you got to have people on the same page so you can do things like this. Get into a no huddle look, um, get the defense into a favorable matchup look for your offense, and keep them out on the football field. You're not doing that. This is playoff football, one on one stuff like that. You know, you you take the you take the air out of the game and you make it a ground and pound control game. You keep an explosive offense on the bench in the same manner by doing these things. Um, Jeez, man, there's so many things you can do. A big play offense, throw it deep to take the top off, makes everything that much more easier underneath. Right. You're not doing that. You're not taking, you know, every once in a while we'll take a deep shot, but I mean like, hey, you're taking four four or like three of them every quarter. If you're doing that, if you're taking three shot, three deep shots 
40 yard passes every quarter. What do you think that's going to do to the defense? The defense is going to come up into the box, bro. They're going to, you know, or to have to stretch out. Then you're going to make right. them move. It's going to make them move back. Now that opens up the running game. Um, there's all kinds of awesome things. Maybe you get into a playoff game and you're running late, late in the clock and you're looking for an element of surprise. Pull out, oh, Oh, Danny boys, oh, fake a la snap right there. You know, fake yeah. snap. You know, the, I haven't seen anything like this pulled out of the Dolphins since Marino. So I'll be quite honest with you. I don't like the – like you need to have these elements of surprise, man. And these are just – these are just basic ones I'm going over with you right now. The uh, We try to do this, the four organic pass rushers so you can create and um, have like – disguises off the back end of that with your coverages we try right. to do this here a little bit but it's just not working because they're not getting the organic pressure with the four no we're not um, our pressures <laughs> get falling and falling it's falling off uh yeah. here's another one that that could there's something that could help that and they're not doing it enough is the fake the a gap blitz fake and drop and then go you know what i mean like you have two guys in the a gap and one of them is like oh i'm gonna blitz i'm gonna blitz and one of them drops one of them goes then you can also do it and reverse it to where the dude fakes the drop back and then blitzes in, meaning he's, yeah. he's coming up like there, then he fakes the drop back and then blitzes back in. That's yeah. the kind of stuff right there that's deceptive that you need to do that they're not doing. Um, I'm not your defensive coordinator. Otherwise, you'd be seeing this all over the football field from me. I would stand um, up, a, I would stand up a 46. Now, I don't know if he's using I don't care about the personnel. I'll just run somebody back there and do it. You're going to get a look that you need. If you get a 46 look on the yeah. same edge, you know a 46, they'll stand two guys up right next to the tackle. Right, um, you could do that same kind of concept of one goes, one stays, and then like mix and match off that. Yeah, mix and match. Give yeah. Mike White something to think about. I'm afraid of Absolutely. Mike White coming into town because he's a local kid from down here where I live. So I'm afraid he's going to come in and show the local people that hey, you missed out on me. You know, so I'm, Bro, I'm um, worried. I, I would be worried about it as well. Like I mean, you have talked before. I think about the same kid. Uh, Mike White. I'm a Mike White fan. I think Mike White is a good quarterback. Um, I think that the Dolphins may have missed on one right there. I thought that he was a little bit better than a lot of the players coming out of his draft class. Um, I thought that with a little bit of time and work and a lot of hard work from Mike yeah. White, that he actually would turn out to be a decent quarterback. And I was we'll thinking see. with Dallas, I was hoping, yeah, after Dallas cut him, I thought Miami may, may swoop in there and say, okay, now let's get him. They had another chance to get him and then but, you know, he's – I'm not saying he's a superstar or anything. I'm just worried about him. Local kid coming down here. Like I said, heck, his mom taught one of my kids at school. So, you know, he's really local. Right, field, right in my neighborhood he grew up. So, you know, and which isn't that far from the stadium. So it's just – it's crazy to think down here he is. He's going to be a starting against us. He could be the right. guy that knocks us out of the playoffs. So, I'm sure know, that's I'm, his – I'm sure that's his whole motivation. But – um, um Continuing on with the things that <clears throat> we wish we would see that we don't see enough is think about every time the Dolphins have tried some sort of like gadget play or trick play. How has it ended? Not yeah, very no, good. No, not, not very not good. good. It's not, they're not executing them. And maybe that's why we're not seeing them. Yeah, but it doesn't mean we're not seeing Probably them. not. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't have me over here puzzled like, damn, why aren't you trying this? Have you, I haven't seen the Dolphins try a flea flicker play all season long. I have seen a flea flicker called all season long. Um, like when you get into the playoffs, obviously these are called more like Philly special. Remember the play they were Brady or uh, Nick Foles caught the pass in the Super Bowl? Philly right. special. I haven't seen anything. I mean, you're waiting to call these plays all to the last second, but uh, how about wide receiver throwbacks? You know, I'm not seeing any throwbacks to the wide receivers and the wide receivers trying to throw them down the field. No reverses, no double reverses, no right. jet Which sweep reverse you all the time, But to show once in a while is something that you need to do just to make someone I think, think so. about. I agree. It's just, but you know, of course, we love to nitpick when we're in the middle of a five-game losing streak. But yeah, but all I these things we're talking you about we, could we you, mix things up for sure. Yeah, all these things we're talking about could give you an edge to get you that one win that we're that we're after. So, uh, you know, what the hell? Like, <laughs> I'm not even opposed to running a wildcat look with Tyreek or for somebody else that maybe even Cedric. Right, he's a backup. Uh, yeah. emergency quarterback put him back there and give me a wildcat look off of it with the element of passing um i don't understand why this is so hard for anybody to understand that these are football plays that you could use um that they're, they're, they're not using they're just going with this plain old plain jane mike mcdaniel's offense dude i'm telling you right now it's we're gonna lose the game if he comes out there and keeps doing the same damn thing 
No one's gonna no no one's fooled by you, Mike. I'm not fooled by you. Nobody's fooled by your plays you're calling. You're basically just saying no, my guys are better. We're gonna line up and beat you. Right. And That's which I great. understand why he thinks that because we have some really good talent on offense. But yes, it hasn't worked for five weeks, so we need we need a little change up without a doubt. Yeah, the element and, of surprise is not being used here. That's why we're that's why it's not fooling anybody is you're not using the element of surprise. Everybody already knows you got Tyreek Hill. Everybody already knows you're going to throw him the ball. Everybody already knows you got Jalen Waddle. So when you double Tyreek, you're going to throw it to him. What about, what else do you got? No, I agree. I'm going to take that pause in you. I know you're all fired up. Hey guys, thank you for joining us here. Make sure you hit that subscribe and give us a fins up by hitting the thumbs up. So we, we love having you guys there. Dolphins rock. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining us. We're new here. We love seeing more people come in here. Let us know. We'll drop you a link and you can join us live. We're always hoping that. We're hoping for a special guest today. He hasn't shown up yet. But we're Gino. We're hoping you're out there listening. So give us a <laughs> thumbs up. So anyway, back to your theory on this being, of course, a must win. We can't worry about <laughs> The other game, but you know, it's you know. a definite must win, bro. Like it's a yeah. definite, definite must win. Like you and could do on some, the fence, you know, talk sports network. You know, pointed out and blew up yesterday. They are thinking it might be a must win in the fact of saving people's jobs and everything to be riding on this. And like I said, I don't know because I was just a Mon a Mondo Salguero guessing, like we talked on. But in case some new people are in here and start getting them back up to speed, that Amando Salguero now on a foul kick, previously of the Miami Herald. He just gave out his opinion yesterday that Mike McDaniel might be on the hot seat if you know if the Dolphins complete this collapse and lose and finish out of the playoffs. So, like I said, we don't know. It's all his speculations, just like our speculation, as if he has a bigger following, so he gets a lot more attention on his on his tweets. But I read the article and it never even said sources other than Josh Boyer said per source, even if McDaniel's. McDaniel survives that Josh Boyer could be gone. That was I could see that. Course. Everything else was just speculation. Well, I could see that. Oh, why would not Ross, mean, you know, go back to his, his pursuit of Sean Payton if we collapse? So, you know, he's just assuming, but I don't think he knows. I don't know, man. Like, we've talked about this a little bit on, the, on this show. Um, I've talked about it with numerous people. Um, I know everybody wants head, heads to fly and heads to roll here and everybody wants to fire everybody every year because their guy didn't win or they didn't get a certain number of wins or passing yards or touchdowns or whatever f tickles your fancy or flips up your dress. Um, that's fine. You can. Everybody's entitled to your opinion and you guys want to break it down every year, but then you want to sit back in the middle of the year that you broke it down in and be like, why are we here? What did yeah. we do wrong? Yeah. Dude, come on. Think about it. You fire the damn coach every damn season and bring some bozo in to replace him. You've gone through, you've gone through more coaches and quarterbacks than – then I've gone through uh, toothpicks after I'm done eating steak dinners after every meal. I mean, I bro, know. this is ridiculous. Like you're going through players and coaches and GMs and everything no, like, like left and right. Years, bro. It's like every three years, it's a new coach. So. And you got and the Steelers. You got the Steelers first. over here, but has this, had had this three coaches since the seventies, and you're over here recycling them like aluminum cans. And then you're, what's wrong? What did we do? I don't understand why we're in this position. <laughs> Come on, dude. I have to freeze real. that moment and go back to that video. That's what I'm going to use <laughs> as your promo right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but anyway, oh, yes, man. I agree with you. It's the same thing over and over, and it just doesn't yield results. We could, every no, three it doesn't. years, almost like clockwork. Every three years, a dolphin coaches on this year. People are saying the hot seat after one year, but I think it's just because of the collapse of the five game collapse. But you know, it's just, it's crazy. That, I take know, my that. lumps now, man. I take my lumps right now. How many times as Dolphins fans have you guys, everyone been so butthurt? Oh, we're going to miss the playoffs. Oh, we faltered to the end. Let's fire everybody from, yeah. from let's change something, man. Let's just take our lumps. He hasn't had the best rookie campaign, but it hasn't been that bad either. So um, let's yeah, take eight it, and three. You know? was the toast of the town being talked about is by the same people that are saying fire him now. They were saying, oh, he's might be coach of the year. I love him. You know, he's so swag. Right. He, he has swag. He's, you know, he's so cool. And, you know, they loved his humor. And now it's like all that, oh, he's horrible and this. But a lot of them have been, I think most 
if we did a poll, I think most people would say keep him. I would hope. I don't know. Maybe I said run. I don't have a huge following on Twitter, so I don't know how many votes I would get. But maybe I would run it. Should he be gone or should he stay? I would think the majority would say he should stay. I think someone ran a poll, but I forget. I didn't. And I never checked back in for the results. But I, I would think the majority. <laughs> how about you guys in here? Should he stay? Guys, let us know. At least we got we got a few people in here. I think I think, I think every I think the majority would want Mike McDaniel to stay because the majority of the fan base isn't complete morons. Um, right. You know that we gotta we can't keep doing the same thing we've been doing. You guys, we just can't do it. I know you guys all want to have these dream scenarios and Sean Payton and this and that and and because the only way you're gonna get me sold on a board with that and being like, yeah, we're gonna win is Sean Payton and. And Tom Brady. Other than that, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean I've heard Bobby all kinds did, of. I've heard Bobby all kinds of. Rumors. He's going to look for us and see what the results were. I, I would say Hell the yeah. majority. <laughs> I would say the majority would say that um, he should stay. I don't know. That's just me because I, I tend to get that feel when I see people arguing about it on Twitter. That most dude, I've seen so. I've heard different. so many rumors right now. Honestly, I've heard Aaron Rodgers. I've heard. Oh, Carr, yeah. no, just, I've heard Sean Payton, I've heard Brady, I've heard Lamar Jackson, oh, yeah. I've heard one day this heard week, everything. Yeah, I turn on Twitter and all these people, I'm like, guys, the season's not even over yet. And you know, other than Brady, which maybe if he doesn't retire, might be the most realistic because everyone else is going to be try, you know, require compensation, and you know, we don't even have that much ammo to give up right now to a team. They're going to want multiple first round picks and want them now, and we don't even have a first. Okay, they're not going to trade a franchise quarterback with no first round pick this year to give back, you know. So, Girl, I'll be honest with you. Some Dolphins fans are so stuck up their own butt. Like, <clears throat> you could offer them oh my God, as, that's a, very, as a, as that a backup very quarterback. very close, though. Look at that 50.6 with no, don't fire him, stay the core. So, so it's 50 50. Uh, that's very it's, close. Though. It's basically 50 50. Um, yeah, that's fine. I would take it. But like I was saying, some Dolphins fans are so up their own butt they wouldn't even take Tom Brady on their football team and have a chance to win. Oh, because, I saw someone say because that. they <laughs> want to win I'm without not... Tom Brady, and they like you know what I mean. They think they're better than that, or they're better. I know. Than I saw that. Like, they're so phony. That they're shit. phony baloney, though, Justin. They're phony. There's baloney fans out there that are like that, bro. I know one of them that. right now. I know what oh, no, right oh, now. I see it was all over Twitter. Oh, I would not want a Super Bowl. It would taint it if Brady. I don't care. It's been 50 years. That's a retard statement. If a space <laughs> alien came down and it ruled he had like Superman powers and it's dirty, but he played for the Dolphins and he won every Super Bowl. I want to. I'll care. take it. I'll I'd take, take it. it. I would take it. It's not going to taint it. They're going to be those people that are saying that are the same people that are going to be the first one running in line buying a Miami Dolphins Super Bowl champion and T-shirt. So they're they're bogus. They're just you know they think it's not going to happen. So I just don't understand happen. why you would say something like that. Like, <laughs> so you're saying just because and I'm not out there with my you know, Tom Brady pom pom saying go get him. I'm not doing that. But if he comes to the Dolphins for one, he's going to be wearing the aqua and orange. And for two, who cares if he wins the Super Bowl with Miami? People say, oh, it'd be more like a Tom Brady. So I can care less if he gets all the credit in the world as bringing my team a championship. That's so, right. I'll be honest you know, with you, man. Before he went to Tampa Bay, I was. <clears throat> kind of inkling around with it in my brain and I was helping my buddy do some yard cleanup and breaking up some leaves. I mean, he's a Broncos fan and we were talking about it and he's like, I think you're batshit crazy, Josh. You're nuts. I was like, if the Dolphins really wanted to win a Super Bowl, wanted to win, and this is in 2019, okay? Right. This is before we even grabbed, drafted Tua. I was like, they should trade for Tom Brady and bring Gronkowski to Miami. And you know what? They were trying to do that the same time I was talking about it. The Dolphins were actually trying to make that happen. If they would have done that, I would have been all for it, bro. That about 2019, I was like, trade me Brady. Give me Brady. I want to win. I want to win. Yeah. Certain parts of Dolphins fans were coming at me like, I don't want to do this. I want to I want to win with my guy. I want to win. Yeah, I don't like Brady. F Brady and all that crap. No, so you'd rather say I'm telling you, they're all oh, full of baloney. They're out that's there. That's the worst thing they could ever say, though, bro, is they're like, no, screw a ring because my pride is better than a ring. Bro, you just you trying to screw the whole team right there. Yeah, I'm glad you're not. Fan, I know. That's terrible, it, bro. No, they're crazy, man. They're crazy, and but I, I I call most of them bogus because they, like I said, I guarantee you, they'd be they'd be going wearing. They would forget about their tweet saying, "I don't want Brady." They'd be wearing that damn Super Bowl T-shirt, Super Bowl champion hat, 
you know, they'd be wearing the pom poms of Tom Brady. You know, so absolutely, a- bro. Like, uh, don't tell me no one's ever heard this saying before because I know we all have. If you can't beat them, join them. I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We're not. Uh, if you have someone who's the best quarterback ever come play on this football team, you would do it. And yeah. remember all the off season noise, all his Instagrams. Oh, Tyreek Hill, and then it shows Tyreek Hill Zoo or. Like, you know, Tyreek Zumba. I remember Tom Brady's Instagram stories. He wants to be yeah. over the Dolphins just as much as we wanted him here. Yeah. See, I wouldn't mind if their take was, oh, I don't, you know, I just don't think Brady's, he's too old now. And I don't think he's, I, I, I can understand that take. Oh, I don't think he's going to make a difference on us because he's past his prime. I disagree. Okay. But to their excuse is that it would taint a Super Bowl if the Miami, uh, please taint away. I can care less. You think, you know, you, you, I want the Dolphin players to get the ring. And the, to hold that Lombardi trophy, you know, us as fans, we don't get all that joy, but we get joys from watching our team do it. It's crazy, more, man. More like more the person who thinks they, they would taint the Super Bowl like that is the same person who probably thinks Barry Bonds doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame because of the steroids, right? You still have to swing the bat. You still have to hit the home runs. Like, no, I oh, agree. my and God. Bobby, I actually <laughs> brought that up on your show when Evan was talking about it when he said TB. Yeah, I'd be okay with him wearing number 12. Miami. Yeah, so I'm okay have- with that. <laughs> even have to go to Bob Greasy and ask though, and whatever. I'm, so. I'm cool with him wearing whatever number he wants. But you know, Bob Greasy is the only. There's only two players in Miami Dolphin history that up oh, Justin froze, which is commonplace for the end of first show. Bring me a ring. <laughs> oh, oh, did you? But yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm. Oh. I, yeah, I was like, man, we're getting by so far. <laughs> uh, but only two players in Miami Dolphin history <laughs> talk about Throwback Thursday have worn as the only players ever wear the number for the Miami Dolphins. Number 39 has only ever been worn by Larry Zonka, and number 12 has only ever been worn by Bob Greasy. So, and that's something that they always promote in their media guides. I don't know if they would want to break that up and throw another guy in as number 12. So that's the reason I know that because I've read articles on that. So because everyone else, I mean, the other number, because 13, of course, was worn by Jake Scott before Dan Marino. And those are the three retired numbers in Dolphin history, 13, 12, and 39. And two of them have only been worn by those players. So I don't Yeah, know. but if you get a chance to get the best quarterback in NFL history on your football team, Bob Greasy, he's going to wear your football number. Sorry. I know. That's no, just I how agree. it's going to go. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. But he would, they would probably go out of this courtesy and ask Greasy, and Greasy would be like, fine. What if he said no? <laughs> I know. I don't, I don't know what they do then. I, I would be like, crazy. Yeah, if you give me like, sign me another extra little check over. <laughs> They'd be like, Ross, here you go. <laughs> That's what I, would do. I would say, you know, give me a little extra money and you can give it away all you want every year. You know? So, yeah, but, man, yeah man. that'd be fun. But anyway, that's looking way into the future. Right now, let's just beat the Jets. We're almost yes. here at our end of our show. Let's just beat the Jets. Whatever happens in the Buffalo New England game, we can't control. We as fans, of course, can't control. You know, donate to his favorite charities. That would be something like that. <laughs> right. That's what I would think. But um, so we'll see. You know, like I said, as fans, we can't control the dolphin game, but the players themselves, they have to go out there and play like this is a playoff game because they can't control what happens in Buffalo against the Patriots. So and we don't know what the mindset of the pick bills are gonna be. Kansas City could have home field now locked up from what they're saying on the NFL Network this morning by time to Sunday. So are the Bills just going to play it like, well, we can't even get the number one seed, so we're just going to take it easy and get ready for the playoffs? Or will they go out and try to win? Of course, Damn. a few years ago, they rested their starters in this thing that happened so deep down it's, the it's, it's nuts, bro. I wish we wouldn't have brought up this Brady thing because now I can't get it out of my mind. Like, yeah. do you realize if we had Brady, you like Mike McDaniels could be your coach still and he could just go be the head coach and he wouldn't have to call the offensive plays no more. No, Brady, Brady. Brady can call the plays. Now yeah. you just need to bring in a defensive coordinator who can handle the defensive play call side. And then, then Mike McDaniels can actually do what a head coach does and delegate both sides instead of trying to be the offensive play call or and the head coach no no i agree and that's why i say it's just i call phony baloney and on it everyone that's saying no i mean they're just they're just trying to look cool now because they probably think it's not going to happen so it's easy to say now <laughs> oh yeah but the minute he signs those things people are going to change your tune that's crazy it's like it's like they're too proud to beg for a super bowl well i'm not please give me a super bowl ring before I, I, was, I, like, I was better at finding like tweets like these guys that i said i, I would take receipts on all those people saying they want it I would say, okay, I expect you not to watch his Super Bowl with the Dolphins in it if Brady's our quarterback. I want you out there fishing, golfing, or Ugh. watching a movie on Netflix. You better not be watching the Dolphins. Hell no, dude. I'd be glued every damn snap. I'd be like, 
every no, play. No, I agree. So that's where I call phony. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be a fun off season, but hopefully it's, uh, the off season gets extended, you know, before we get there. I mean, it's, hopefully we go one more week before, at least before we start talking about off season moves. Hopefully we I, win. I just want to say this before we get into the off season. The only thing that is going to make me happy if you move on from what we have right now, you've heard me say this before. There's only one combination out there that I'm even Tom interested Payton in, and, and Tom Brady. That's it. If you don't bring me that, I don't care. That's I what really I say, don't. I say if, and that's what's going to be the expectation. If I don't want this to happen, but say it goes to crap Sunday, we lose out. We continue to collapse of like 1993. We top that collapse. Don't make the playoffs. We Monday morning, me and you will have a show, so we'd be right on top of it. If we see breaking news that. I'd be shocked, but then in the back of my mind saying, okay, Ross has, has to have a plan this time. It's not like, oh, let's try to go get this guy. He better have, you know, hell, we already got sued for tampering, lost our, you know, punished for tampering. So you better I was just gonna damn. I was just going to say that. I was like, bro, we just got a first-round pick for tampering with Brady and trying to get Peyton. Um, what's to hesitate you just going and pulling the trigger on the whole damn thing? Back? Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Now what? And just nice. do it. And Just already have it. your Maroonie. I know it's not fair and it's not the equitable way that we want to do things in NFL. They want to do, but just have a couple of Maroonie candidates set up. Okay, we interviewed our minority candidates. And then Sean Payton, well, you guys didn't even interview him. Well, who cares? He's in. Couldn't it, so. couldn't it be that we interviewed the Rooney, the Rooney ones as well, but actually hire one of them too to play de- to be the defensive coordinator? I mean, would that work? Is that feasible? Is that plausible? You still got to ha- interview. Yeah, I mean, it is, but you have to interview them for, for the head you know for the head coach up oh, i lost them but anyway i hopefully he gets back in before i close out here but guys thank you i uh, use this time to say please like and subscribe we are new here i've said a few times that we are new here and he is back but this is part c <laughs> and we thought we're just gonna get out of this one i know man, but that's it that's our that's our mo you know that's our little trademark you have to fall out at the end at least week, once <laughs> every day so anyway like i was saying i agree with you you know let's go all out but that's the only way so if we like i said i do not want the collapse i want to make it I clear i want my miami dolphins to be in the playoffs I mean, if they're a one and done i want them to be in the playoffs but right. having said that, if they lose and they continue the choke job that they have in the past few weeks and they lose again and they're out of the playoffs and then we, you and I are talking, it may already be have happened or first thing in the morning. And then I, but in my mind, if I see that McDaniel's gone, it's going to be, it's going to either be like a hardball or a Sean Payton better be in his pocket. Not like, uh, oh, you know, well, we tried those guys and here comes another rookie head coach, which could be the great scenario if that happens. <sighs> So he better have something already in there. And like I said, because, man, we already got nailed for the tampering. So yeah, I mean. Some kind of deal, whatever deal you had in place almost. Right. Have it ready to go. Ready to go. Back on the table. Antics, <laughs> get your minority interviews out of the way. You know, and I, you know, I hate to be it, but, you know, it is. That's what all teams do anyway. They go with who they want. Right. Um, I just want this to be on record that I want to keep. I want everybody to know that I want to keep what we have right now in-house together. And that includes Chris Greer. I know people are going to hate, especially you, Rob, you're not going to like that. Um, I want to keep what we have in house. I want to keep Tua. I want to keep Mike McDaniels. I want to keep Chris Greer. I know it's brought us some really bad picks, but um, I don't think there's a lot out there to replace him right now. I really don't. If you bring a better candidate, that GM, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, then maybe we'll talk. But I want to. I want that to be on record known that I want to keep what we have now. The only way I want to bring in Sean Payton and a Tom Brady is as, as a contingency plan if things don't work out and that they're going to make the move anyway, and, and yeah. Ross is going to clean house. That's that's. I want that to be known. This is my contingency plan. That's the only one I really like. Right. No, I I agree, and I think that if McDaniel does, someone's already in the back. That's what I would think. But of course, how many times have I been burned as a Dolphin fan? There's a, probably a chance then we'd be talking about another rookie head coach because oh, he decided on the last minute he he went to Denver or whatever, you know. So I was just you know, thinking in my mind, watch him pull out of like the woodworks all of a sudden, uh, and the Miami Dolphins' new head football coach is. Sonny Dykes, former TCU head coach. I'd be like, what the hell? I know. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what I would say. Let's just not – let's just hope for the best. Let's hope for a playoff win and a, a – I mean, a playoff appearance and a, a God forbid, a playoff win definitely there'd be no talk about, you know, that. But let's just get to the playoffs. It's time to wrap up today. So is there any final thoughts? Oh, 
yeah, man, everybody keep their head high and <laughs> hope that we win this last game and Tua gets back and healthy and gets us to some playoff wins and it goes off the field doing this. Hey, that's what, hey, that's what <laughs> I want. Oh, dear. Sorry, I'm cutting out your wonderful face just for a little throwback. It's all Ace good. It's for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, guys, thank you for joining us here today. Make sure you do that like and subscribe, and I'm going to leave you with um, AJ Dewey pick six to can to end our throwback. Third. You better hit that Bye. like and subscribe before I beat that ass. And if yeah, you don't, exactly. and, if, and, if, you. and if you don't, and if you do, then maybe I won't beat that ass. No, yeah, kidding. exactly. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Fins up. Fins up.